So in the first reading today, we hear about uh, the institution of the Lord's Supper. And St. Paul is going into this trouble that's going on. He's saying, you know, you go and you start to eat. I guess it seems that there was some sort of a meal that they had before the, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And so they would gather for a meal. But unfortunately, those who were rich, it seems, were because they had the leisure, they could come and start eating when they want, where the laborers and the slaves had to finish up the work that they had to do before they could come. And so there was this disparity. And there was, because it was in a home, you could have, you know, the, the high people sit in these high chairs. And, you know, then the lowly, they, they, they can sit over there on the floor or whatever else. And so St. Paul is saying, you know, what's with these divisions that are going on among you? There's something going on. And he's saying, you know, when we look at the grace of the Lord's Supper where Jesus comes and then we have this institution narrative um, you know, who, that he's talking about, you know, how Jesus comes. And he says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. But then, for whatever reason, the lectionary skips over to then... Uh, th this section that says, So then, brethren, when you come to eat, come together to eat, wait for one another. But they miss some key points here. I'm not sure why they took it out. Maybe it's just too hard to hear. But you guys are up for it, I think. I think you can hear it. So, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in, a worthy, in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment upon himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we, would not, we should not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are chastened, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. And then it says, and so then, my brethren, when you come to eat, wait for one another. So we hear that St. Paul is encouraging us, saying, know what you are doing. Know what you receive. You're receiving the Lord in his body. And make sure that you prepare yourself that you are made worthy. We see this in the early Christian community, those who are following Christ, that there's these divisions and some of them are not examining themselves and finding them, you know, before the Lord, before they come to receive the Lord. And that's why he says, many of you are sick and dying and some of you have even died. This, these, these are hard words. And so when we look and we say that, you know, the church says you shouldn't receive the Eucharist in a state of sin or if you're not Catholic because you don't understand what it is that you're receiving. It's not that the church is saying, this is our stuff. Stay away from it. You have to be part of our club. That's not what the church is saying. But rather, it's a means of love. Saying we want to protect you. You could die. You could die. Make sure that you examine yourself in order to be able to receive the body. That's why at the very beginning of Mass, right, we have the penitential act, where we say, okay, we take this time to look at our lives and say, where are the areas of my life where I need to get myself right with God? And as we heard yesterday with the, um, the, the, the three parables that Jesus told about the, uh, the lost sheep and the lost coin and then the parable of the prodigal son, it's not that God is saying, finally, you have come to me, but rather he rejoices. He, he longs for us to come in our brokenness and say, God, I need your healing. He runs out to meet us. He goes seeking for us. If only we knew who we are. I think in, in my own life, I think there are really two reasons why we don't examine ourselves, why we don't look to see what are the areas of my sinfulness. One is because, uh, you know, I like my sin and I don't want to have to give it up. And so if I examine myself and see that this is, it means that I'm going to have to change my life. The other is shame. I hate my sin so much that I'm, I'm ashamed to bring it before the Lord and I'm afraid of how he's going to react to this. And sometimes there's a lot of both going on. 
mixed in together. And the Lord just says, I so want to bring you healing. Come to me. Come to me. I want to make you worthy. We, we contrast that to the centurion in the gospel who asked Jesus to come and heal this slave of his. But then he says, don't trouble yourself for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. He has examined himself and he recognizes his own unworthiness. And I think, I, I, I don't know, but I think the reason that Jesus doesn't go to the house isn't because he's unworthy but rather to show by his faith. Do you see his faith? His servant is healed. He doesn't even need me to go as a sign of God's power, a sign of God's love. But here was a man who wasn't even part of the Jewish nation. And certainly Christianity hadn't started up yet, but he believed with great faith in Jesus. And Jesus commends that. And in that, he examined himself and says, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. We hear that. You ever heard that before? But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. You ever, ever, ever hear that anywhere? I don't know. Like right at, before we receive communion. It's an invitation for us to look at ourselves and say, what are the areas that I need to surrender to the Lord? What are the areas of brokenness that I need to turn over? What are the areas of my sin that I need to repent? And to ask God, discerning the body here, that this is not just a symbol, this is not just a bread ritual, this is not just a nice thing that we do, but this is Almighty God comes to this altar in order that we may be united in intimate love with Him. That we may come into an intimate union with the God of the universe. So we have to prepare ourselves, examine ourselves, examine ourselves in light of the God who is head over heels in love with us. So that instead of running away from him in shame, we can run to him and say, God, here I am in all my brokenness. Lord, you know I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.